Okay, so for the first problem, we have solved the following miscellaneous equations, and please show all of your work. The first problem is a uh, u substitution problem of the quadratic form. One big reason you know that is because the two thirds is twice as big as the one third, so the exponent of the first term is twice as large as the exponent from the second term. Also because there's three terms, the last one is a constant term and it equals zero. So these are all reasons why it is of the quadratic form. So we are going to let u equal x to the one-third. So the first term is x to the two-thirds. So I can rewrite that as x to the one-third squared minus seven times x to the one-third plus twelve equals zero. And if I'm going to use my u substitution here, Every time I see a u, an x to the one-third, I can replace that with u. So instead of x to the one-third squared, I have u squared. Minus seven times x to the one-third, but instead of x to the one-third, I'm gonna put in a u. Plus 12 equals zero. All right, so now that I have it in u's, this is a quadratic equation, and it's actually pretty simple to solve using um, factoring, so I'm gonna factor it into u minus 3 and u plus u minus 4. I set each of those equal to 0 and solve and I get u equals 3 and u equals 4. Which is great, is a great answer for u, but I ha was no one, no one asked me to solve for u. I was told to solve for x. So I need to translate all the u's back into x's. So I'm going to translate the u into x to the one-third and each of those x to the one-thirds equals their um, solutions from u equals three and equals four. And now I'd like to solve these. To solve a rational exponent problem, you just raise it to the reciprocal. The reciprocal of one-third is three over one, or really just three. So therefore I have x is equal to three to the third, which is three times three times three, or 27, and then I have x equals uh, 4 to the third, which means 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. So these are my two potential answers. I say potential because I need to check them. So I'm going to check x is equal to 27 first. So I have 27 to the two-thirds from the original problem, minus 7 times 27 to the one-third, plus 12 is equal to 0. Remember what 27 to the 1 third means. That means the cube root of 27 squared. The cube root of 27 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So this first one is 9 minus 7 times 27 to the 1 third. That's just 3. And I put a little question mark over the equals because I'm not actually sure if this equals or not. So I get 9 minus 21 plus 12. Uh, that gets me negative 12 plus 12 is 0, and 0 does equal 0, so I know that 27 works. So now I'm going to go ahead and check x is equal to 64. Okay. So when I check x is equal to 64, that gets me 64 to the 2 thirds minus 7 times 64 to the one-third plus 12 is supposedly equal to 0. Now remember what 64 to the two-thirds means. It means the cube root of 64 is still squared. The cube root of 64 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. Minus 7 times 64 to the one-third, that's just the cube root of 64, which is 4. So 16 minus 28, which is negative 12, and negative 12 plus 12 is 0. So they both check out, and the, my solutions are 27 and 64. On our next problem, we have a fractional exponent again. This fractional exponent, unlike the last problem, has an even in the exponent. Notice when we were solving it, um, on our last problem, we had x to the one-third. 
because 1 is odd, I did not have a plus or minus. But because the 4 is even, I will have a plus or minus in this problem. And I'm going to have that plus or minus right on the very next step. Okay, So the first thing you want to identify is if you have a plus or minus. And this one you do, and the last one you don't. So I'm going to raise both sides to the 3 fourths, which is the reciprocal. Um, so that gets me uh, 4 thirds times 3 fourths is just 1. So I have 2x minus 5 to the 1, or I'm just not going to not write that. I have to put the plus or minus on the very next step. As soon as you raise both sides to the reciprocal, you need to have the plus or minus part. And then I've got to figure out what 16 to the 3 fourths is. Well, the 4 becomes the index of the radicand. And this becomes the fourth root of 16 cubed, which is the fourth root of 16, that's 2. And 2 cubed is 8. And then I'm going to solve for x by adding 5 to both sides. One of the common student mistakes here is they'll try to add 8 plus 5 and get plus or minus 13, and that's just not right. The 5 is the only thing that is positive. The 8 is the thing that's plus and minus. So we need to just write 8. Just put the 5 in the front, plus or minus the 8. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I get x is equal to 5 plus or minus 8 over 2. Now if um, I didn't know how to add 5 plus 8, like if it was a radical or an i or something like that, I'm allowed to leave it that way. But because I know what 5 plus 8 is, I actually have to work this out. 5 plus 8 divided by 2, and then I also have to do 5 minus 8 over 2. So 5 plus 8 over 2, that is 13 halves, and 5 minus 8, that's negative 3 halves. Great, So, but now I have to check my work. The reason I have to check my work is because I have a fractional exponent. So I'm going to check my work over here. Uh, let's check 13 halves first. So I'm going to plug in uh, 13 halves every time I see a x. So I have 2 times 13 halves minus 5 all raised to the 4 thirds is supposedly equal to 16. Now this looks hard and scary because we have fractions but it's not that bad because the 2's divide out nicely and I'm left with 13 minus 5 Uh, 13 minus 5 is 8, and 8 to the 4 thirds is supposedly equal to 16, so let's check that. So I'm going to take the 3 and make it an index of the radicand. The cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 to the 4 truly is 16. So 13 halves works. I'm kind of running out of space here, so I'm going to leave the other check to you, but negative 3 halves also does work, and both of those are the solution. Um, to that problem. For our next problem, we have to evaluate each of the following given the piecewise function g of x equals negative x plus 4 if x is less than 0 or x cubed plus minus 2x plus 1 if x is greater than or equal to 0. Be sure to only plug this into one of the two parts. If your value of x is less than 0, then you're only going to plug it into the first one, not the second one. If your value for x is greater than or equal to 0, again, you're only going to plug it into the second, not the first. If you put them into both and hope that I just find the right answer, I'm going to be marking off points because you put it into both because you didn't know what you were doing. So in this case, because 3 is less, negative 3 is less than 0, when I try to find g of negative 3, I am only plugging in into negative 7x plus 4. And I replace the x with negative 3, so that gets me negative 7 times negative 3, which is positive 21, plus 4, which is equal to 25. So therefore, g of negative 3 is equal to positive 25. Now some people usually ask me, do I have to write g of negative 3, or can I just write 25? Are you going to take off points for that? I'm not going to take off points, but this is the most appropriate way of writing your answer. On the next one, 0. Uh, is 0 less than 0? No. So I can't plug it into the first one. Is 0 greater than or equal to 0? Yes, it is equal to 0. So when I'm finding g of 0, I'm only plugging it in to the second equation, x cubed minus 2x plus 1, 
which gets me 0 cubed minus 2 times 0 plus 1. So we have 0 minus 0 plus 1. When I add that up, I'm getting 1. So g of 0 is equal to 1. In the third one, I have g of 2. So because 2 is greater than or equal to 2, then I'm only going to plug it into the second equation. So g of 2 is equal to 2 cubed minus 2 times x, which is 2, plus 1. So 8 minus 4 plus 1. Following my PEMDAS, I add left to right and get 5. 